Good evening and welcome to TDM Talk Show. China's top legislator was in town this week for a three-day visit. Zhang Dejiang spoke highly of Macau's patriotism while calling on the local society to rally behind the chief executive. The chairman of the National People's Congress Standing Committee has also urged the SAR to grasp the opportunities brought by China's fast development. To look into the significance of Zhang Dejiang's visit, we are joined today by Ilo Yu, a political scientist and associate professor at the University of Macau's Department of Government and Public Administration. Professor Ilo Yu, thank you very much for joining Evening. us. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Patriotism, safeguarding national sovereignty and national development interests. These are some of the key words of Zhang Dejiang's visit to Macau this week. What's your general comment on the outcome of the visit? That is what we achieved <laughs> yes. in the past uh, 17 years. As uh, I believe, you know, uh, from the point of view uh, of Beijing, uh, Macau make a very good demonstrations on one country, two system in terms of what you say, national security, right? Uh, how to deal with uh, the to manage the central and local relationship, and that is uh, the Macau. Uh, government as well as the society actually pay a lot of emphasis on the one country and so that we are enjoying the local autonomy at this moment and so that is uh, what uh, the uh, central leaders actually uh, appreciating what Macau you know uh, contribute for the image of uh, or as well as the actualizations of one country two system. So what's the significance of this visit by Zhang Dejiang? He's the chairman of the National People's Congress is also within the standing committee of the Communist Party's Politburo, the one in charge of Macau and Hong Kong affairs, is the so-called number three uh, within the party uh, leadership. Um, so, uh, and he's expected to retire uh, right. from the party's top echelons later right. this year and as top legislator next year. So what's your comment on the timing of this visit and the purpose and the significance? And I think there are two points. Of course, as what you say, uh, he's retiring okay, from, from the leadership. And that, is, uh, that may be his last time uh, visiting Macau you know, uh, at, the, at, the, at the chairman of the NPC. Okay, and so this is a very significant by saying that you know, uh, he is living. Okay. And, on the other hand, right, it's quite interesting when he, he actually uh, 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 going to Macau and the central government said that, you know, uh, Zhang actually is uh, under the, uh, the order or the instructions by the President Xi that uh, he, he, he came here to, uh, you know, observe uh, Macau and what happening and, and would like to encourage Macau. And so it seems to me that, you know, uh, there is also the central uh, government's um, uh, approach, you know, uh, in appreciating uh, Macau's uh, experience for one country, two system. And I believe uh, many uh, Macau people as well as the Hong Kong uh, society may also have, a, have an idea that, you know, uh, Zhang's uh, visit actually would like uh, to, to, you know, uh, persuade Hong Kong people that Macau's uh, experience uh, got to be a very good model for one country system and would like Hong Kong, you know, uh, got to follow what Macau have achieved. It. So you would agree with those who are saying that, uh, well, uh, when Zhang Dezhiang was saying those uh, words, uh, um, uh, kudos for Macau's patriotism, Macau enacting the national security law back in 2009, and the Macau model and the Macau approach to the one country, two systems policy, he was not only talking to Macau, but he was also talking to Hong Kong and to Hong Kong people, right? Well, for, 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 it's quite clear that is first, this tell Macau people, yes, you did a good job. You know, you did it in the eyes of the central leaders, okay? And at the same time, hey, Macau is a model of one country, two system. And of, for sure, that will project an image that this is one country, two system. And then, you know, the other side, Hong Kong, as an other SAR under the concept of one country, two system. What, what you did, okay, in the past 20 years, and that you, you got to, you know, reflect and uh, try to, you know, uh, pick up what you haven't yet achieved in the past 20 years. And uh, that message was probably 
uh, particularly the case uh, when Zhang Dejiang, while addressing uh, Macau legislators, was saying that uh, it's important not uh, to uh, resort to filibustering or violence. That's something that we never had here. Right, right, right. But you did never. have in Hong Kong, right? <laughs> Right, that that's true, and that, that is what uh, the uh, Zhang, uh, Chairman Zhang actually would like uh, to uh, remind the Hong Kong legislator that you know uh, you got to cooperate uh, with the uh, executive branch in order uh, to pick up uh, the 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 the, the high-speed train of. Chinese development, uh, China's development, right? That Again, here that key message is of an executive-led model, yeah. where the legislature does play a role in supervising the executive, but not in the guise of uh, checks and balances as you have in Western liberal democracies, for instance, right? That is the the Beijing's uh, approach in understanding, you know, the political system in uh, the SARs. That is, uh, this is not talking about balance of power or, 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 you know, it's more or less talking about the cooperation between the executive and the legislative, as well as the uh, judicial yes, branches. Yes, exactly. And so this is what Beijing understands. And so like the Hong Kong you know, uh, legislator, that uh, they got to cooperate with the executive branch. But the question over here is that, you know, uh, it's not just when we talk about co cooperation, uh, that is uh, how the executive, okay, deal with the legislature. And as we can see in the case of Macau, uh, yes, I would say that, you know, the legislature tried to be quite cooperative, but at the same time, the executive branch tried to be like, quite respectful to the legislature for some uh, issue, like, you know, when you're talking about uh, the degree law issue, right? And then the, the executive branch, uh, you know, have proposed a new bill that to restrict the, the chief executive uh, uh, issuing uh, administrative regulation. I think this is a very significant uh, example by showing that, you know, the executive branch would like, you know, to, uh, you know, restrict its own power and then would allow the legislature to have more uh, authority in making law. And so I believe this is what we did uh, in, in the past seven years. But uh, in the case of Hong Kong, uh, I, 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 I'm not quite sure that, you know, that actually is an executive and legislative dynamics that is, uh, I'm not quite sure they have trust, you know. Uh, so that the issue of mutual, mutual trust is key here, right? Right. Uh, and so that, and that's then, why the, the, the problems, okay, uh, existing in Hong Kong filibuster and the violence that is, you know, they, 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 they don't respect each other, but, you know, and then it's widening the gap rather than, you know, narrowing down. The, narrowing it down. Uh, and, and of course, we have Zhang Dejiang visiting the Legislative Assembly. But let's say last year when he was in Hong Kong, he did not visit Hong Kong's Legislative Council. And this is the first time, by the way, that we have a Chinese state leader uh, visiting Macau's legislature. And also this meeting with uh, the top judges and top prosecutors. What's your take on this? Well, uh, that is interesting. I think um, last year when uh, Chairman Zhang uh, visited Hong Kong, uh, uh, you know, the political atmosphere actually was not that healthy and it's not it's very delicate, not that, right? Not that good. And uh, you know, such maneuver may 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 actually uh, you know stir up the issue about, you know, uh, that is what is the one country two system. Is the central government supervising the, 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 the local legislature? And rather, you know, uh, Chairman Zhang uh, met uh, several Democrats okay, in the receptions, okay, and uh, listen their complaint against the, the Hong Kong government. I, I believe uh, what he did last year in Hong Kong uh, is trying to deliver a message that, you know, they would like to have a reconciliation uh, with the oppositions, okay, and uh, they, they, they got to talk uh, and discuss what uh, the Hong Kong and the central government got to uh, manage their relationship. And so they would like to, you know, take some memories, okay, in order to, to improve the central local relationship. But in the case of Macau, I think uh, this time, uh, the central leader actually would like uh, to project what is, in the eyes of Beijing, a real model of one country, two system. As what you say, uh, Chairman Zhang did not only meet 
uh, the uh, chief executive as well as the, the government, but also visit the legislature as well as the, the judicial branches. branches. And so that means that you know, under the one country two system, the one country, the concept, the central government actually is you know, overseeing the three branches. The so-called comprehensive jurisdiction right, right. of the center. Yeah, and so this is the central one country. With this one country, and then you have the local autonomy to deal with this by yourself. And I believe this is what uh, the central government would like to deliver. You got to respect one country. And this one country means what? The central government actually is overseeing the various branches in the government. It's not just talking about the executive. And so this is quite key. And at the same time, it's quite normal that, or, or you know, that is saying that, you know, uh, Zhang actually is the chairman of the MPC, the legislature of China. And so he visit the legislature is actually, is a parallel uh, relationship talking about the central government's legislature uh, chairman visiting the local legislature. And I believe this is not that, you know, uh, talking about the in, uh, intervention, but it's talking about, you know, we, we are the central and then we are trying to understand more about the local. But it's quite interesting talking about, you know, uh, meeting the, the general prosecutor as well as the, the court of final appeal, I, I believe. This actually would like to imply that the central is over here. Uh, and the message when in this meeting uh, with the top judges and the prosecutors, um, Zhang Dejiang uh, pointed out that uh, the one country is the prerequisite uh, for the two systems, and we have different legal systems, uh, and this has to be um, uh, the cornerstone of their approach. The officials in the executive, legislative, and judiciary branch, when they implement the Basic Law. Right. Again, when he's saying this, he is not only talking to Macau, correct? Because that could be regarded, and is regarded by Beijing as an issue when it comes to Hong Kong more than when it comes to Macau. Yes, I think that is what, what is the aims of and objective of this trip that is to, you know, uh, to project a real image or real models of one country, two system using Macau as a demonstration. Mm -hmm. So this is one country, two system. Okay. And if Hong Kong actually adopting the one country, two system model, that should be, you know, operate in this, you know, outlook. Uh, whenever we have this kind of high-ranking uh, state leaders, the kind of people that they meet, um, in addition to the officials, uh, well, there's always this uh, gathering um, and uh, in some interaction with the people from different sectors, but uh, those who criticize this approach say, well, at the end of the day, they are always meeting the same kind of people from the elites and from the so-called patriotic camp, uh, what about the rest of the civil society, other kind of people that uh, normally are not part of this picture? What do you think of this? Well, I think that is the, 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 the issue that we got, we got to discuss. And I, I believe that is, uh, you know, uh, a limitations, okay, for, for the central leaders, okay, visiting Macau or ever as Hong Kong. But, you know, that is good in the case of Hong Kong, you know, when, when uh, Zhang Gang, you know, visited Hong Kong last year, he met the Democrats. Uh, but I, I don't know why, you know, uh, uh, Chairman Zhang did not, uh, you know, at least uh, with, uh, meet, uh, you know, Antonio Aukamsan, you know, uh, they, they are regarded as, uh, you know, uh, the leaders of the Democrats. And, uh, well, this is very significant to show that, you know, uh, when we're talking about uh, the conflict, in the society, especially he, he talk about, you know, we have conflict, okay, big conflict or small conflict, and uh, how can we deal with it? And I believe that, you know, uh, that is a good idea that, you know, um, uh, the, the central leader in the future can uh, meet uh, the Democrats, especially I, I believe that, you know, uh, Alcumson and Anthony, they are regarded as uh, loyal opposition that that's mean actually they are supporting the political institution in Macau. Of course, they are opposing the government, okay, and criticizing the government. But at least they are, you know, uh, 
you know, operate or playing the games within the institution rather than just uh, rework the whole system and build up a new one. And I believe this is uh, what we got to think about this. And, you know, the, the issue over here is that, you know, yes, in the case of Hong Kong, because of, you know, uh, the political atmosphere, yes, the, the central leader would like uh, to 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 uh, meet the Democrats so as to you know to improve the relationship, but it seems that right to a certain extent, central leader with regard that you know, uh, well, we have difference, but at least uh, this is you are not a problem, <laughs> and so we don't need to meet you. And I, I believe this is uh, the lesson now of the of Beijing. Okay, uh, in you know visiting the the people in Macau, it's just it would just like to consolidate the uh, core uh, pro government or pro Beijing forces in Macau, especially from the traditional uh, social groups. I would like to consolidate them uh, in supporting the. Uh, Macau SAR government and, and pay little attention uh, to the opposition or to, to people. Or even different groups from the yes. civil society it would yes. not, not have to be necessarily yes. uh, lawmakers or pro-democracy activists, but there are other groups in the society uh, that some would say could um, join this kind of events or could yeah. be uh, co-opted in a way. Uh, but I think that, that is one I believe the central government would leave it to the Macau government, especially when uh, China Gang are just uh, you know, saying that we have conflict and uh, that's why the Macau government got to improve its ability and capability uh, in governing the various forces. That means, yes, Beijing know it, okay, know everything, or at, at least know about, you know, we have different, uh, you know, opinions in the society and uh, they have, uh, you know, different comrades, you know, towards the government. And at the same time, uh, I believe uh, the Beijing would not like uh, to meet, you know, the so-called opposition or the people, they are different, okay, uh, to the, the core pro government forces that may project an image that the government got to deal with them uh, in, a, in, a, in a higher priority. But I believe that uh, when Gender Gong uh, just remind that uh, we got to improve our government's governance capacity. And that is the point uh, indicating that yes, our government, although we, we did a good job uh, for, for one country, two system, but in terms of the domestic affairs, uh, the government's ability is still uh, left behind what the society developed. And so that means uh, just leave it to the government. You got to do it and just remind the Macau government. And rather than I uh, would like to, you know, uh, exaggerate the, the, mm -hmm. the issue and so that the, 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 the society may stir up the issue by saying, that, hey, you know, you see, <laughs> uh, the government did a really poor job on this. Uh, talking about that, I mean, there was no major announcement as some were expecting. And also uh, issues such as you know, controversy surrounding the land law, housing woes, transportation infrastructure problems, all this. Uh, this was not directly reflected or not even mentioned by Zhang De Jiang. Uh, but let's see, for instance, when we had Premier Li, Premier Li Keqiang, uh, President Xi Jinping, or even before uh, former Premier Wen Jiabao, uh, the kind of conversation was a bit more specific on the the problems facing Macau, uh, the hurdles, the obstacles, the challenges, and even the emphasis on the need to diversify the economy. There was some reference, but not very um, evident, I would say. That's why, okay, Zhang's visit, okay, actually attract, you know, the attentions of many Hong Kong people, especially at the elite level. They have a concern that, you know, what John uh, uh, Gang uh, said in Macau actually is he is telling to Hong Kong people rather than talking about Macau. And so that's mean as what you say, we have a lot of problem. But in his trip, okay, he tried to emphasize downplay to downplay that and all to emphasize this and the what, what Macau achieved. And I believe that is what general uh, perceive in Hong Kong and Macau. Both we got that, you know, uh, would like to promote Macau's one country, two system model and to pursue Hong Kong, okay, to follow. And I believe 
that is what uh, what that is the major objective of Zhang's uh, visit to Macau this time. Instead of emphasizing social problems, all these uh, uh, challenges, uh, which uh, basically are the talk of the town, right? Uh, so that's why he just have a uh, you know footlocked by saying that you got to improve, improve your, governance. your governance ability. So that is the footlock. And to summarize what you say, we have problem. You got to deal with this. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, we had, of course, uh, you were talking about uh, lawmakers from, uh, well, they used to be affiliated with the New Macau Association, not necessarily anymore. I'm talking about uh, Ng Kwang-shun and Ao Kam-san. Uh, they uh, had this, came up with this letter calling for political reform, uh, for, uh, of course, universal suffrage for the chief executive election, a roadmap for um, increasing the number of uh, directly elected seats right. and to um, implement the municipal, the municipal uh, bodies, uh, non-political uh, bodies which were promised earlier. Uh, but of course, nothing of the kind was mentioned, not no. even in the form of administrative reform. No. Uh, this kind of agenda, is this out of the radar in the foreseeable future? Uh, I don't think so. I believe, you know, uh, this year actually is uh, quite sensitive because of the legislative elections. And that is uh, when you're talking about political reform, democratic reform, the municipal organizations, you know, all these actually are quite sensitive. I believe before the, the legislative election, the government had wanted to talk about this. As the government have already said that, you know, uh, th there will be uh, public consultations for, for the long political municipal organization establishment uh, in Macau. I believe that is just after the, the legislative elections and so would not like to generate issue that, uh, you know, for, for people to discuss during the election rather than having the discussion after the, the, the election. And so what you say is talking about political reform. As you got to know, and I believe the Macau society, you know, overlook a point that is when we talk about having the uh, municipal organization, you know, one of the major reasons for this municipal organization is because of the basic law, we got to have representative, okay, of this organization in the selection committee of the chief executive elections, right? And so if that is the case, that may also imply we may have a political reform Right, in order to, you know, uh, amend the local law, election law, you know, in line with the basic law, that is, our chief executive election committee will have representative from municipal organization, right? But at this moment, we don't have this element, right, in our local election law. But the basic law talk about this, and if that is the case, that means we got to uh, revise our election law for chief executive. We are halfway through Tersayon's second term, second and last term right. in office. Uh, will there be time for some sort of political reform, let's say addressing the uh, 2019 chief executive election, uh, and also by including and uh, enacting uh, laws uh, governing the future uh, municipal body? So th my, my point over here is that if we're talking about the amendment of the election law, that means, as what you say, that will have the implications of uh, political reform. And some people will say, that if we are now going to reform, shall we have more reform rather than just adding some more seats for, mm -hmm. the, uh, for the municipal organization, right? Mm -hmm. And so I believe that will generate some debate in the society. How can we, especially when you're talking about, you know, the, the selection of the, uh, the, the compositions of the uh, election committee for chief executive election. And that is, you know, it is the section four. And if in the section four of the election committee, you know, uh, existing, we have the legislative uh, mem uh, members, as well as uh, the, the, the CC, PCC uh, representative, as well as uh, the, the MPC dedicates, right? And so, but they occupy all the seat over there. And this, that is the case. That's mean, if we don't, you know, increase the size of the election committee, that's mean, you know, I believe the 
the representative for Natural Nature ever at the CCP, CCP, CCPCC, okay, representative will, the number of the representative of them will decrease, right? And so that is, well, we have to discuss, right? Shall we in, enlarge the size of the election committee or just, you know, Rearrange the, rearrange the numbers. The numbers and the proportion. Right. Uh, it's actually allocated. quite sensitive, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. And and then if we enlarge the number, then then you know it's another story, right? This is a, another round of political reform in Macau. And if that is the case, that's is what you say. Uh, we cannot avoid to talk about political reform, okay, in the coming years. But that hasn't been on the agenda from the part of the government. Of course not, because they don't want to talk about this before the legislative election. So after September, maybe there would be something coming out of yes. this. Uh, also during this week, and actually over the past few months, some would say even years, but uh, we have this situation. Um, it happened again. Hong Kong pro-democracy legislators being barred, being denied entry into Macau on the grounds that they allegedly pose a threat to the SAR's uh, internal security. Um, and we had uh, more cases uh, last weekend with another uh, lawmaker from the Democratic Party, also district councillors too, in addition to some activists. Mm. Um, this is uh, seen from Hong Kong, and not only from the pro-democracy camp, uh, this uh, has raised the eyebrows and has stirred up yeah. a big debate, right? Right. What's your comment on, on Macau's approach to, to this matter? I don't know. That is quite interesting. I would say that there may be at least two scenarios that we, we got to pay attention to. The first, uh, this is the central government's uh, policy that is uh, because of the visits of the central leader. You know, we got to make sure that you know the the environment, the society will not be interrupted by external forces. <laughs> okay, including you know uh, that is external forces meaning non Macau elements. Okay, and that may be from Beijing's order. And then other scenario may be uh, that is uh, the the uh, local sec uh, security forces. They have a concern about this. They would like to tighten. Uh, the immigration policy in order to avoid any possibility or, or, or any people they have some possibility that may generate... But some issues. of these lawmakers and some of these legislators, for instance, uh, let's take, for example, uh, one of the latest ones is a legislator from the Democratic Party, which is not known for being a troublemaker, I think, yeah, in right, Hong Kong, right. right? And the Democratic Party within the spectrum of the pan-democratic camp in Hong Kong is considered a moderate force. So that's, that is what I mean, that is, that is, you know, they would set the standard very high, okay? During the, you know, uh, at normal season or normal time, okay, the bar may be so low because of the leaders, okay? I don't know whether it is from Beijing or from the local secur security forces consideration that they would like to, you know, increase the standard in order to uh, avoid any, you know, uh, high probability that uh, the, the, some politicians in Hong Kong would do something in Macau to, to attract the eyeball of the Hong Kong and Macau society and then sidetrack the visit of the, uh, the central leaders. But by having uh, this kind of approach, well, aren't Macau authorities uh, somehow, some would say, tarnishing the image of, of the Macau SAR? Uh, not only internationally, but also with regards to uh, its relations with uh, Hong Kong. SLR. Yeah, I think that is the, the issue that the, the local security forces got to, you know, uh, think about this. Or uh, I, I believe uh, there, there should be uh, communications between the local security forces with the central government. But uh, I'm not quite sure this communication is in, in a very uh, smooth uh, mechanism. Rather, uh, the communication channel seems may not be that smooth. And so that's why uh, the local security forces rather would like to, you know, tighten the policy in order to avoid, generate any, any issue.
during the visits of Chen Degang and in, in order to protect themselves. I believe uh, that may, may be one of the possibility that uh, uh, the, it is come from the local security forces. Mm. Professor Ilo Yu, uh, we are about to wrap up our talk. Uh, one uh, last question. Uh, in the run-up to the legislative election in Macau, of course, we'll have time to further discuss this uh, next time. Uh, what's uh, your impression on the likely outcome of, uh, of the coming election with regards to the balance of power among the different forces uh, which are considered from the pro-establishment uh, camp mm -hmm. and also those who are labeled as opposition? I think there, there will be some new phases in the legislature first of all, quite sure, as, as some uh, incumbents uh, okay, uh, just uh, decide not to run uh, in the coming elections. And at the same time, uh, I believe uh, the competition, I would say the intra-democratic competitions may be so you know, hot that is uh, talking about you know, Antonio Algonson as well as the Lim Macau Association now, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and so they they actually they they compete with each other, okay, and at the same time some uh, more or less uh, liberal forces at this name as well as Coutinho's, okay, and the last the last Coutinho's candidate list have uh, two seats, can can his list can still grab two seats in the coming election? I'm not quite sure, I don't know, um, and so that means you know. Uh, for the liberal forces, I would say uh, the, the, the game seems to be quite uh, you know, hot. That is, their competition will be very hot. And at the same time, I, I believe uh, from the uh, pro-government forces, and uh, they will have uh, some new candidates. And at the same time, they are still negotiating. And I'm not quite sure that they would like to have a very hot competition uh, openly, rather. Uh, Right before the nomination, they are going to you know negotiate with other camps that uh, you know uh, to coordinate or or just to 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 talk about okay which candidate will will come out rather than you know uh, compete openly in the game, and I believe for the pro government forces, uh, now is quite hot I believe the, for the competition, but. Right after the nomination, I believe that competition may not be that uh, that hot uh, afterward. Rather, for, for the democratic camp or, or the liberal forces, and then the I would say that they are in a chaos. That's mean you know they they are competing with each other, uh, especially for for the uh, new Macau Association. Now they don't have the legislator at all. I I would say, and That's and, right. and the two legislators just run away and have their own election, and then how? The Lim Macau Association, you know, uh, survive uh, in Macau election, and I believe this is a very uh, important games uh, and, and and issue, okay, for the developments of the pro democracy forces in Macau. And we will be keeping a close eye on it, yes. and later this year we will surely have another chance of having another conversation um, more focused on the legislative election, Professor Ilo Yu. Thank you very much you. for joining us. Pleasure to have you on the show. Good evening. Good evening. And to you at home, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week.